to it. Here's our demo application. If we go to categories, we can see a list of categories of video topics. If I click into NUX3, I see a list of all of the NUX3 videos. And once I click in, I get the embedded video plus a bit of um, descriptor here. Everything's looking good so far. But if I go back to the overview of the different categories and I click on Laravel, we'll see we don't get what we expect. Instead, we see the same NUX3 information. If I refresh though, then I'll see the correct information. And then if I go back, now I click on PHP and instead I see the Laravel information still. I'll refresh and now I see the PHP unit video. Okay, so that's the first co common error that you'll see with um, that has to do with routing. And the second I can show you is like this. So I can click all over and everything seems to be working fine. I can go from route to route with no problem. I click on this multi-route route, however, and then wherever I click, everything is gone. That's the second one. You'll probably get a hint of how to solve it by the name, but we'll get into that. Let's take a look at some of the code. Routing in NUX3 is very simple. The first thing we need to do is to use routing is simply pull in this NUX page component and use it within our app.view. Once we do that, we create a pages directory and the files within within this pages directory correspond to the, the URI here. So if I do slash login, I end up at the login page, just as this file is here. If I don't have anything, just as you would expect, that is this index page component here. So for every directory, you can have an index. And then if you go to, for example, slash categories, as we already have, you'll see slash categories. This is that index component. Back on the categories page, we'll see we are at slash categories slash NUX3. This NUX3 portion of the route is actually a dynamic parameter within the route. We'll see it is also listed here. Back in the code, we see name is within the brackets, and that is the dynamic portion of the route, and it is the parameter. If we want to have access to the value of that parameter, we can use the composable given by Nuxt, which is use route, and then we can use dot notation to get at that value. However, if you make a mistake and you misspell this, there is no error handling available. So those are the banners that you see here. We have the yellow banner and the red banner. And using this um, composable from Nuxt, I ac accidentally misspelled, instead of writing name, I accidentally wrote names. So that's why it's actually missing here in the red banner. We'll see, we'll see it working real quick. So instead of names, name, so there it's working. What I would suggest is to build in your own error handling for now until uh, they have it already built into Nux. You can use this composable within a composable of your own, pass in the parameter you're looking for. If there isn't a value, then throw an error. We'll see what that looks like. If I were to do the same error here, so in my custom composable here, I instead wrote names. We'll see, I actually get proper error handling. And I see, oh, the name of that parameter is actually name, not names. Then in development, instead of on production, I would see that that's an error and then I could correct it. So that's one way to ensure that you're getting the correct parameter names for routes. Before we get into server-side routing and the solutions to the problems I showed you, I have one more type of route to show you on the client side, and that's the catch-all. Here we see the dot, dot, dot with the parameter name notation, and that is a catch-all. Slug is arbitrary. You can name it whatever you want. Here is the component, and I just simply give it a Indigo background, and list out all of the segments of that route. Let's see what that looks like. I don't want to change my language. I want to change to the browser. And if we go to something that doesn't exist, say slash first, we already see the first segment here. And then we can go to second, for example, slash second. And no matter how, many, how deep we go, how many slashes we have, this catch-all will catch that, and then you could do whatever you wish um, from there. So that's a catch-all route on the client side. So back to that pesky problem we had at the beginning. When I click on a specific category, I expect to see lessons from that category, and that category is NUX3. 
But once I change categories, I expect to see from Laravel, but I'm actually getting it from that previous category. The solution here is pretty simple. I'm using use async data, and this key needs to be unique, and it's not. We have a hard-coded key here, which means every time we change the route, it's going to check use async data is being called. So this function is being loaded. It loads the function and it sees, oh, I've already seen this key before. I already have that information. I'm going to give to you what I already gave you because I see that nothing has changed. And you get the old information here. If we, we have two possible solutions, either we make sure that this key is dynamic. We can do that by using the dynamic route parameter here, and that will work. So let's refresh, go to Nuxt first, and we see the Nuxt lessons, go to Laravel, we see the Laravel lesson, go to PHP, we see the PHP unit lesson, and everything works as expected. An even more concise and let's say better way is to let Nuxt do that for you. We can just use use fetch, use fetch, and use fetch already sets this key dynamically for us, and it already has the oh my fetch built into this composable. So the syntax here is much more concise, and we end up with the same exact result as passing in the dynamic route variable. So that is how you solve that problem if you see it. The other problem that I showed you was once I click on this multi-root component, all the other components are broken. No matter where I click, I just have that white screen. This solution is also pretty simple and easy. This component has multiple roots. And although it is allowed in view three, in Nux three with this awesome routing, it actually causes problems. So we're going to just simply wrap these this multiple roots in one div and then magically the problem goes away so now i no longer have a problem once i click on that same function you might have to adjust your stylings but that is the price you pay for not having to do your own routing so now let's get into server routing routing on the server side in nux is just as easy as it is on the client side you'll recall we use this use fetch composable to get some information on the categories earlier. This call to the API slash API slash category corresponds to this server directory. Inside the server directory, we have slash API slash category. And then we have a dynamic route and it works just like the dynamic routes under the pages directory. We'll drill in here and we'll see when we want to get the value of that um, dynamic parameter, the dynamic route parameter, we just use the event context instead of the use route composable. And then we can do whatever it is we need to do. We'll get into API stuff in further lessons, 